there, and welcome to another episode of A Gentleman's Guide to Peer-to-Peer -peer Lending. Uh, we have a lot to cover this week, including a traditional Slovak cooking lesson, a brief discussion about financial education and the importance of designing products around people's lives and circumstances. Plus, we're going to go talk to some of the tourists here in Bratislava to find out where they're from and why they came to this great city. And lastly, we're going to give you a quick introduction to Zuluki Mellon's new loan that is helping first-time home buyers finance their mortgage deposits. But before we get started with all of that, we just have enough time for a quick recap of the latest news in fintech and peer-to-peer -peer lending from around the world. Extra, extra, read all about it! Goldman Sachs took another big step into the world of alternative finance, announcing the purchase of $300 million worth of loans from the alternative lender Mosaic, which specializes in providing consumer credit for the installation of solar panels. This follows several similar moves by Goldman Sachs, including the launch of an online lending platform in the US and plans to launch a similar platform in the UK soon. Peer-to-peer -peer lending in India received a big boost this week following the announcement of new regulations that will place it on similar legal footing to that of traditional mainstream banking in the country. One aspect of this that has been criticized, however, is the requirement that peer-to-peer -peer lenders provide investors with a provision fund or safety net uh, to cover any losses should loans on the platform default. This obviously bucks the trend seen here in Europe by platforms like Zuluti Mellon and Zopa, who no longer offer investors a provision fund because it decreases investor earnings. And lastly, Funding Circle in the UK became the latest of the big lenders in the country to announce a move away from the auction-based model of peer-to-peer -peer lending. This move has been criticized by some of their investors due to the decreased transparency and reduced investor earnings associated with a market-based model of peer-to-peer -peer lending as opposed to the pure traditional auction-based model operated by firms like Shaluti Mellon. That's all the time we have for today in terms of the news, so let's get over to the kitchen and learn to cook some traditional Slovak food. So, this week we are going to take a little break from sightseeing around Bratislava and instead show you how to cook the national dish of Slovakia, which is Brunzove Halushki. Brunzove Halushki. Now, I say we because luckily my wife is going to help me cook this because, well, I am English and my cooking skills basically start and end with beans on toast or anything else that comes out of the freezer. So, first of all, we're going to start by showing you what ingredients you need and how to prepare them. A whole lot of grated potatoes, the Slovak brinza cheese, a few eggs, some chopped bacon, oil, flour, and some salt. How is it going, Joss? Is it hard? It's hard. Hmm. I think it's easier to just order it at the restaurant. This is just the first potato. <laughs> and once you've grated all your potatoes and probably some of your fingers, you just want to add some flour, some eggs, and some salt, and mix it all together until you get a thick cake-like batter. So now your big pot of water is boiling. Uh, we're ready to go with the next stage. And at this moment, my wife has helpfully decided to inform me that she's never actually done this before. Uh, but fingers crossed, let's see how it goes. So what you're going to do is you want to take some of that nice kind of cake battery potato mixture and just put it onto a nice little serving board like this. See how sticky that is. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is much like I accidentally did just there, you're going to take a big knife and you're going to take little about one inch, 2.5 centimeter uh, thing, and you're going to throw them in like that. Didn't I say this was going to be fun? So once they are floating to the top and have been there for a minute or so, they're actually ready to come out. So you just want to take them like this, drain them, and then you can just put them on a plate to the side. We've obviously still got to make our bacon. Safely cut your bacon into small squares like this and fry it until it is nice and crispy. Then, for the final preparation, add your brinzo cheese on top of your halushki, add the bacon with lots of the juices, and make it look pretty with some herbs. And of course, we need something to drink with this delicious meal. And what we have here is zaki sanka, which is a traditional kind of Slovak milk. It's again a little bit sour um, and very thick, as you will see here. Almost like clotted cream or something. And it goes perfectly with the halushki. So, I've never tasted this before, but. 
delicious. <laughs> it's interesting. I might have a pivo as well. And as you see, this cheese is melting, so you want to get some of your cheese, some of your bacon. Not bad for an Englishman. It's definitely better than my beans on toast. So, now that you've learned about traditional Slovak cooking, it's time to learn a little bit about finance in another episode of Financial Education 101. This week we're going to be talking about the difference between financial education and financial capability, which, in a nutshell, is the difference between educating people to use complicated financial products and services and designing those products and services in a smarter way to use people's existing financial education and help them use and manage their money more effectively. Later in this episode, we're going to give you a great example of that using Zloty Mellon's new innovative cash-free hypo loan, which is helping people to fund their mortgage deposit and buy the home of their dream. But before we get to that, let's take to the streets and meet some tourists here in Bratislava. Guten Tag, sprechen Sie English? Uh, English? Uh, I'm making a short film about tourism in Bratislava. Can I ask you a few quick questions? Yeah. Of English? Yeah. Danke schön. So where are you guys? <laughs> well, where are you guys from? Germany. From Germany? Where in Germany? Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Ah, okay. I studied in Saarbrücken. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys doing here? What's the nature of your visit? The, the historic city. Drinking. <laughs> Drinking in the historic city. Good combination. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Um, Hi. If you could just, I was wondering uh, what, where you're from, where you're all from. You seem to be from different places. Uh, um, we are from... United States. Ah, okay. So it's obviously a long way to come. Uh, can I ask why you came to Bratislava? Is this part of a bigger tour? or? Yes, it's part of a bigger We're, tour. The, we have the uh, National Czech and Slovak Museum. Ah, in uh, Iowa. In Iowa. Okay. Yes, in Cedar Rapids. Because there's a lot of immigrants, I think, from Slovakia kind of Slovakia. in Iowa. Yes, okay. Yes, a lot. Mm -hmm. So exploring your roots. Uh, <laughs> That's her. Although, I'm Irish. Okay. And I'm German. I'm English. Oh, okay. Sie Deutsch? I'm Irish. <laughs> Irish. <laughs> and I'm Czech. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And how have you found it here in Bratislava? Is Wonderful. it different than Lovely. you expected? Or? No. We were Not hoping for, for more sunshine, Wonderful. but other than Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I tried. I didn't know you were coming, that's all. <laughs> it was a beautiful day. So yeah. we just tried the wines, which were a surprise. Because it's a great we, wine growing we area here. We know nothing about Slovakian wine. Mm -hmm. And we found it to be excellent. Well, mm -hmm. there are many good things here, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your oh, trip. Thank you. Thanks thank so much, you. ladies. Have a nice day. So, where are you guys from? We're from England. We've been on a Ramblers holiday. Ah! We've been walking in the mountains. In the Tatras, yeah. in the high Tatras. Yeah. And how was that? Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah. And, and the paradise. Yeah. And the paradise. The gorgeous. Ah, okay, lovely. Mountains are a little bit taller here than in the UK. Uh, <laughs> so, hello. Uh, <laughs> where are you from? I'm from India. From India? And what brings you to Bratislava today? Uh, the scenery and the good weather here. Okay, and how have you found it so far? It's good, it's good. Where are you guys from? What's up, dude? <laughs> US of A, man. Yeah. Where in the US? up with new buddies. I'm from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C.? Yeah. Oh, okay. I used to live in California. Okay, cool, man. So, uh, but cool. I'm originally from the UK. Uh, so, you got you live here or are you just all visiting for the We're weekend? Or? Our boy is getting married this week. Ah, yeah, okay. Oh, Congratulations. So, he lives yeah. there. So, uh, how have you found Bratislava? We just got here. We just got here. We're going to start gambling and drinking right gambling. now. Gambling? Okay, okay. Brunch. Yeah, what nice. do we do around here that gets us into the real trouble? Uh, the real trouble? I'm not sure about that. It's a, it's a nice place to go out now. So, now you've heard it not just from me, but from tourists from all around the world, that Bratislava is indeed a beautiful city and a fantastic place both to live and visit. Now, though, we're going to pick up right where we left off, talking about financial capability, using the example of Zluti Mellon's innovative new cash-free hypo loan, which is helping home buyers to finance their mortgage deposits. Uh, specifically, we designed this product to tackle a traditional problem of financial education, which is that people, especially young people, are not saving enough and therefore unable to afford the mortgage deposit on a home when it comes time to buy one. Uh, in the UK, as much as 25% of mortgage lending 
is only made possible because of borrowing from the bank of mom and dad, which obviously can involve lots of awkward dinner conversations and probing questions about your love life or lack thereof. Um, this new product enables people to finance their mortgage deposit, typically 15 to 25 percent of the total purchase price on a new home, and then repay it over a period of around 20 years, equivalent to their mortgage loan. The interest rate on this loan is low and fixed at 4.9 percent, and investors get the great benefit of investing in the secure investment of real estate and also receive steady earnings. They are also obviously only locked in for rolling five-year periods rather than the full 20-year maturity period of the loan. So, a great example of how innovative financial services can solve problems not solved by traditional financial education and help improve people's financial capability. That's all we have time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of A Gentleman's Guide to Peer-to-Peer -peer Lending. As always, please leave us all your comments and feedback below this video or by sending me an email. And we'll see you next week. Dovidenya!